Welcome back to the Combi Life Adventure. I'm pleased to say that after the recent very scary experience of almost losing total control of our steering and being stranded whilst we attempted a self-rescue, we are now back on the road. This time we're headed north through Sardinia to the quaint but very adventurous town of Ulasai. We are driving around the world and you guys are invited too, so subscribe and buckle up. It's one heck of a ride. The tiny rural town of Ulesai is nestled in amongst stunning limestone peaks and sits just short of 800 meters or 2,500 feet in elevation. We were planning on spending a few days here to explore the area, so we checked into a campsite for around 11 euros a night. We were in excellent company at the campsite as there's quite a few other overland adventurers that find their way to Ulusai. And there's a good reason for that, as you're about to see. You stay here to work? Yeah, I've got to work. Well, we won't be having any fun without you, honestly. You stay in here, buddy. Bye bye, towel lady. Yeah. I'll come in with you. Can I come with you? Yeah, jump in. You! Go! Hey. So good to be in the town of Ulusai for some sport climbing in these beautiful cliffs. There's just beautiful valleys of green and these huge rock formations coming out of them and everywhere there is rosemary growing so there is just this strong smell of rosemary floating through the warm breeze it's absolutely delightful How was it, buddy? It was really nice, but... <laughs> I think I saw you with your foot oh, above your head at one point. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> it was, yeah. I wish I'd taken a photo again. What? You've been climbing in these? <laughs> Yeah, you should definitely get some new ones. Yeah. What are these shoes? Uh, these are shoes from the 90s. 100% leather. They don't do this anymore. Some, some great style there. They don't build them like this anymore. <laughs> They're built to last. <laughs> and they lasted. Yeah, what, they're 30 years old now? Yeah. Compared to the modern 
tarantula. Oh mate, oh, you got a hole. You got, got a big a hole. hole. You got yeah. a big hole in your oh, shoe. Oh my god. god. See, not not built to last. <laughs> oh, that oh, climb, huge. climbing too hard. Heading back through the narrow, twisty lanes of Ulusai town on the return to the campsite, we just about had enough energy to pick up some essential supplies. I'd say like 9 to 10 kg. Really? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a watermelon luckily. That's massive. And learn about a crucial Italian custom. This is the Italian kids' drug. No, it's like a cap in, in the lemon. In the lemon. You have to put uh, the <laughs> straw on the lemon. And then why does it taste the different? <laughs> Back my straw, and he was like, No, in the lemon. And then I had two holes. I was like, No. Mm, you know, childhood. Damn, the amount of water already. That was a lot of water pretty quickly. Yeah. Look how much rain is coming off this, this awning. It's just absolutely pouring down. That's like constant as well. Are you still going climbing in a bit? <laughs> yeah. I, think, I don't think so, eh? Have you been on Tinder? Huh? Have you been, have you been seeing that Tinder? Yeah, it's all the, it's all the van over there. Match yeah, with somebody in the campsite. The <laughs> You're trapped in the toilet with the Tinder girl. Yeah. <laughs> the story's getting better by the minute. You just had a ho heroic saving of your tent. Look at the flood. Look. Oh. It was all going that way. Sarah got out there. Look how wet she is. Oh. She dug a trench for you, mate. Thank you. I'm going to hide me because I'm full of mud. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to hide me. What, that's the trench you dug? Yeah. yeah. It was all going towards your tent. Oh, no. You found love, but you've no tent to bring a girl back to. Yeah, wet tent. Got. I've got some capocollo. Capocollo is the what part? The, the neck is pig, but is it the neck? Maybe? But it's quite good. Back, good. neck. Yeah. It's fat. Where it's fat is good. That's a reconfigure. Did you did you convert it or you bought it like this? No, I, I bought it as a shell, and I've got it in the desert in Arizona and ripped everything out. Nice. And uh, built this, my home. So when I have to convert my van, I can ask you for some help. I would be a good guy to ask. Yeah, he really would. This Work. trip has just made me want a van so much. I think next year I'm going to get a van. I watched so many videos <laughs> about people's van, like showing, mm. okay, I did this because of that and how yeah. I did it and so many ideas. So many ideas, so many layouts. Yeah, I, I have a few favorites actually. Yeah. I should send them to you. Okay. Oh, I can definitely sense a new Combi Life van build series on the horizon. Watch this space. Actually, we've already started filming that van build series. As part of it, we've been looking at some exciting new tech 
in the van life space, like this Anker 521 power station. Full disclaimer guys, Anker have kindly sent us this power station, or silent generator if you will. Hold that in your teeth and I'll pull. And they are kindly sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of Anker, they're recognized as the number one mobile charging brand. They have around 10 years in the industry and have sold over 200 million products in over 146 countries. The Anker 521 power station is tiny in size, but mighty enough to power a weekend's trip. It has 256 watts of lithium iron phosphate batteries, which means it's extremely lightweight and it lasts six times longer than other battery power stations. So in the box, you get the power station here. You can see how light it is because I'm just picking it up with one hand and uh, an instruction manual and a couple of ways to charge it. There's the AC adapter so you can plug it into a standard wall socket and also a DC adapter to be able to charge it from your vehicle whilst you're driving to your next location. That is brilliant. It also means it has rapid charge and can charge up to 80% in an hour and a half. In such a portable size with a tiny footprint, you don't necessarily have to install a huge electrical system in your vehicle. This is all you need. And if you do happen to have an electrical system in your vehicle and you find that you're missing a little bit of additional capacity, this is a very cost-effective and flexible way for you to add additional capacity to your electrical system and be able to take that with you however you decide to travel. And if you spend more time in a house than a camper van, it's also a great backup option in case there's a power cut. It's got five ports and all covering all of your devices, including a USB-C for quick charge and recharging of your power station. The smart display is fantastic. It shows you the remaining battery capacity, current input, and output status as well as the recharge time. There's a reason that this product has so many five-star reviews. It is fantastic. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the top line of the description. Thanks to Anchor and thanks to you guys. Now back to Combi Camp. Fortunately, in this part of Sardinia, the heat is as intense as the rain. And so by early morning, our van life washing was already starting to dry. We've been having trouble getting Alaska to eat her food. We got some of these Italian pouches uh, of wet food to go with the dry food. This one is, how do you say this? Trasetti con manzo, pasta e carote. It's got pasta in the dog food. <laughs> of course, we're in Italy, he says. There is actually legitimately pasta, wow. look. There's actually pasta in there. I find that hilarious. I've never seen dog food with pasta in, but I guess when in Italy, they haven't really been eating. They've been eating maybe half a bowl a day, maybe. Obviously, pasta was the key. She's just been feeding them pasta all along. After fueling up with an Italian style breakfast, we were ready to go exploring. By this point, you've already seen that this region is blessed with incredible limestone cliffs. And over the past 20 plus years, the small local climbing community here has been busy putting up hundreds of world-class climbing routes. This has now turned Ulusai into one of the must-visit sport climbing destinations in Europe. One of the newest areas to be developed is called The Frame. At The Frame, each climb is named after a famous artist but it's most extraordinary because here we get to climb inside a boulder. So this was basically a huge boulder that was split in the middle. And now, now it's a climbing route. This is a really unusual, quite special place to climb. Yeah, and there's a route over here, which is really nice because you have the cross of the track. Yeah, there's a tree halfway up the route. <laughs> and uh, this was only bolted last year, right? Yeah. Brand new. This is such a stunning line. Being able to climb at the cross intersection where the boulder was long ago divided by a lightning strike. Nah, just kidding. Oh, a nice jug. This one is nice. <laughs> this crack was unforgettable and it sure is a cool place to top out. This climb, named after the famous Spanish painter Goya, was definitely one of the most memorable climbs in Ulusai for me. 
but my biggest challenge and most unforgettable climb was in the nearby Canyon Satapara. This climb, called Vision Crack, is an unmissable crack that rises 25 meters over 80 feet up the lower eastern part of the canyon. The line just called to me and it did push me way out of my comfort zone. But after eight months of climbing and countless years of travel, I know that that is where the real lessons happen. And Vision Crack taught me as much about how to climb as how not to climb. A few days in Ulusai barely seems like enough time, but we went hard, sometimes too hard, and now it is time to go home. Well, it is for Connor at least. Getting Connor home, however, is going to be easier said than done. You get your results? But that is a story for next time. Cozy.